Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Team APS. I'm Alex. I'm Paul. And we're here to share with you five things you didn't know about the MetaCards you use. So let's start with Pot of Desires. So as we all know, this is a bit of a controversial card. Banish the top 10, draw two, but we're not actually talking why. about <laughs> how good the card is. We're actually talking about the art itself. This is actually part of a series of cards, the Pot cards. Or, you know, just general bad draw cards. Yeah, um, Pot of Greed, Pot of Avarice. There's also- Pot of Benevolence. Duality. Of acquisitiveness. Riches. <sighs> dichotomy, all, all of the different ones. But what's interesting about this card is that it's actually a combination of two, two existing pot cards. And guess what? They're both forbidden. Yeah, it's Pot of Greed and Pot of Avarice. And funny enough, also the synonym for, you know, desires would be greed or avarice, avarice kind of things like that. So it's meant to be a combination of both. And funny enough, its effect is pretty similar. Although all the pot cards tend to involve drawing in some capacity, uh, it might be sort of foreshadowing of what might happen to this card, though. Yeah, if, I mean, if they're forbidden, then who's to say this one won't be, too? Yeah, the art it's based off of, so it's not two cards that are banned. I can see it. Now, there is something else that's actually really interesting about this card. Um, it's actually going to be featured again in upcoming card artwork. Yeah, that new card is a trap called Recall, and it actually comes out in Code of the Duelist. And it basically involves the Goblin of Greed. It's a monster that we'll actually get into here in a bit. Yeah, you'll hear about him again. Trying to trade in his pot of duality that I guess he bought earlier in that card's single purchase. Yes. Single purchase. He's trying to trade it in. For Pot of Desires. Yeah, for his own Pot of Desires. And it seems like the Pot of Duality is kind of broken. If you look on, if you look in the official artwork for the card, it seems to have its um, one of its arms kind of welded on there with metal. Yeah, and you're led to wonder, of course, if the Goblin of Greed did this himself because he's greedy and he just wants to get desires, not duality. What's interesting actually about all the pot cards too is they all kind of have their own little stories. Some of them are combinations of two existing pot cards. It's actually worth looking at all of them because they're all kind of unique. Yeah, I like the faces. The Goblin of Greed is frequently seen trying to get his hands on these pot cards. Yeah, his, his he's got a cool story which goes literally a riches to rags to maybe back closer to riches story. And that actually segues perfectly in to, to our next, next card, card, which is... That grass looks greener. Yeah, so this is another kind of controversial card. It recently got limited. It sends a bunch of cards from your deck to the grave, enables some really strong strategies, but it's not what we're concerned about today. Yes, so like we said, God on the Grid is in this card, but also Nettles and Sniffus. And there's also some cans of Miracle Fertilizer in the ground for- I wonder what happened there. Yeah, so uh, it's kind of difficult to interpret exactly what's happening in the artwork of the card. But you could say that the Miracle Fertilizer made the Nettle go out of control. Yeah, and we know that the card's name, That Grass Looks Greener, is actually based off of the proverb of the grass always looks greener on the other side. Which is actually reflected in the uh, actual effect of the card. Yeah, so that proverb tends to mean like, you know, what, like everything, everything whatever looks, the next person has. Yeah, if it's not yours, it tends to look better than what you have. Right, and so the effect of the card is, you know, you kind of just copy your opponent's deck by mailing until you have the same number they do. Yeah, and I guess ironically, it's supposed to be a bad thing, even though the card itself is a really good card. Yeah, you, so. you love running those 60 card decks. Now, the Goblin of Greed's in the artwork, and we're just kind of going on speculation here and saying that... He kind of moved into a shack at some point with all the bad stuff that happened in his life. Yeah, because if you follow his sort of story through the cards... It, he has a crazy life. He's always trying to do these get-rich-quick schemes, and, and they, they typically don't fail. always work out like he's an upstart goblin in several other cards actually mm -hmm. so and it looks like he, he's watching kind of in fear as sniffis is running wild chasing the nettles in the grass yeah i guess he didn't expect it to happen what's our next card next card twin, twin twisters. twisters so wow we should have had alec here for this yeah, I know. do some twin twisting in this video ew um yeah so there's some interesting things about this card first and foremost it's a spell and trap removal card and it kind of continues a trend of spell and trap removal cards being wind-based effects. Yeah, I think of, you know, Heavy Storm. Giant Trunade. Dust Tornado. All those cards that, you know, destroy spells and traps. They're all like hurricanes and twisters and just different things like that. And also in the artwork, you can see a couple different uh, other cards in there as actual items. Yeah, there's Ancient Telescope. A Magical Hat. Uh, there's Horn of Light. 
and two scapegoats. Yeah, and also, weirdly enough, the Ankh from Monster, Monster Reborn, Reborn, which is like, I don't understand how that was in the I guess the Monster Twister. Reborn was never just a spell, it was an item that they used to reborn the dead. Yeah, right? And I guess it got blown away into the ban list? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I don't know. Um, on that note, actually, a couple of those items actually do wind, wind up in a fusion... Recycling plant? Yeah. Yeah. That's actually really cool, and that's something we could totally... Because Fusion Recycling Plant's a card that's actually loaded with its own set of yes. objects from other cards past. It looks like what it sounds like. So basically, Twin Twisters blew a bunch of stuff away, and it kind of all ends up at the Recycling Plant. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is kind of more of a theory, but I think that the Twin Twisters actually comprise uh, the Xyz Monster Tornado Dragon. I mean, the artworks are very similar for one thing, even though it's just wind. Yeah, it's just a dragon that's just kind of like made out of wind. But you can see in a in Tornado Dragon, his um, tornadoes kind of go off panel, so they can kind of reach around and hit things like Twin Twisters could. Yeah, and I also think the Twin Twisters might be related to that upcoming card, Heavy Dust Storm, uh, I mean, because it involves like two sort of spiraling hurricanes. And if you look at Heavy Dust Storm's name, Heavy Storm, Dust, and dust tornado. tornado. So we have the Forbidden Chalice and Solemn Strike. So these are both cards that are prominently used in the metagame. And we put them in one because the actual artwork is for both cards are very intertwined. Yeah, so basically it involves this woman, or sort of maiden I guess, who continues to touch things, touch she's, things not she's not really supposed to. Um, it started I guess with Forbidden Lance, Forbidden Chalice. There's also Forbidden Dress. Forbidden Scripture. And yeah, it's basically just her finding things, or touching things, or using things, or drinking from things. That just aren't hers. That she's not supposed to. And the man who's featured in Solemn Strike is either God or some other father figure who scolds her. Yeah, and basically he scolds her in Solemn Scolding, and then finally he gets her. sick of her. And hits her with that Solemn Strike. Where you literally see her getting Zapped. Zapped and blasted. But that's not the end of her story. It is not, because once she's getting struck, it seems like her wings are turning black. I wonder why. She turns into the Condemned Maiden, which is a really obscure card from a kind of older set. But the funny thing about it is uh, you can sort of tell it's her based not only on the artwork, but her hair. And the effect that lets you use quick play spells from your hand. And as it happens, all the forbidden cards, that is, you know, forbidden chalice, lance, dress scripture. Hmm. So quick play spells. If even if she's already fallen and she's still doing the same old thing, has she even learned her lesson? Dimensional barrier. Yeah, so uh, we all know this is a really powerful trap. It's subject to a lot of complaint for a long time, but as always, we are not focused so much on the effect. We're looking deeper. So what's on this card? So we have to see here. We see a continuation of the Gagagigo storyline on this card. We see him free the matchless general and marauding captain. And it looks like Gagagigo Gag 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 the Risen Gag 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 is being like, separated from Marauding Captain. And I guess that's sort of a sad thing because at first I, when I saw this card I thought like Gagagigo the Risen was like trying to attack them and the they barrier was protecting them. But it also actually seems more like Marauding Captain is sort of trying to reach out to him. Yeah, he's like distraught because he's trapped on the other side. Which would make sense if you uh, look at some of the arts of other cards. They're actually comrades? Uh, yeah, they're friends. But you know who who Gagago isn't friends with? Freed. He hates Freed. It's actually interesting then that Freed's featured in the art. Oh, it's not. They fought many times. Yeah, so it's strange that Freed is with Marauding Captain. They're both being separated from Gagago. Well, it's kind you, of a weird story. If you look at um, at Memory of an Adversary, uh, Gogu Gagago is attacking Freed, the Matchless General, and about to kill him. Except um, Marauding Captain jumped in the way. So there's definitely a story there then. Yes, and now that I think about it. This could be freed again, because um, what was that card? DD Borderline is similar to this card in the art, in, the, in no other way, but just in the art, where somehow Freed creates a barrier between him and Gagago, which I think was him throwing him to a different dimension. This could be something Freed did. He could be a douche. Yeah, and if you're interested in actually the story of uh, Freed, Marauding Captain, and Gagago, they're actually featured on a load of other cards. Oh, that, yeah. More than we can talk about in this video, but. They just look at um, Camarada and Captain and Gagago's um, trivia pages. Yeah, my Yu-Gi-Oh with you, there's a lot to learn. Oh, yeah. So, those are... Five. Things you did not necessarily know about the meta cards that you play in every deck. Uh, I think, that all in all, the interesting thing about Yu-Gi-Oh that so many people don't notice, really, is, is just this. Like, 
Lots of stuff recurs. Yeah, lots of context go in the cards. Lots of the same monsters show up, a lot of the same objects show up and themes. Mm -hmm. And they're always like staple cards too. And I like that they there's a progression for some cards. Yeah, there's always sort of like a semi storyline going on. Which sometimes it's just a series. What do you think of the to Warrior like Refra? Because he gets some weird stuff happening to him. So if you guys like this and maybe learned something that you didn't know, show us some love with a thumbs up. Let us know if maybe we should do more videos like this. And give your own suggestions. Yeah, because there's a lot to talk about. Anyway, that's going to be it. Uh, let us know down in the comments what other card arts intrigue you. What stories are worth talking about that you've noticed in artworks, trivia, things like that. I think that's going to be it. So we'll see you guys in the next one.